This right here is a keyboard layout. This is another one. And here's a third one. If we put them side by side, we notice a few differences that can be important for games. The first one is that the WASD keys commonly used for movement are not in the same spots on the Azerty keyboard layout. They are here and here. And this can lead to games being barely playable on keyboards using this layout. Another one is the position of the Z key. It's in a different spot on all three layouts. I mostly see this in game gems that the X and Z key, because they are close to each other on the QWERTY keyboard, are used as action keys and these are hard to use together on QWERTS and Azerty layouts because they are so far apart. But should we really care about these obscure keyboard layouts that no one has ever seen before? Yes, we probably should, because even though the QWERTY layout displayed here in green on this map of Europe, it is the most widely used one by a margin. QWERTS is used in many European countries, with Germany being the biggest among them, and Azerty is mainly used in France, Belgium and some African countries. And there are even more layouts out there. For example, national ones displayed in yellow on this map or non-Latin script ones like these here. And even though they often map to a QWERTY layout as seen here on the Japanese one, they certainly don't always. So please let us know in the comments if you're using a non-QWERTY layout and what your experiences are with this, both in playing and developing games. From a player perspective, it is possible to change your own keyboard layout using your operating system settings. On Windows, this can be done by clicking the Windows button, searching for language settings and then clicking these three dots next to your preferred language, going to language options and then here you can add a keyboard layout. And we see here some QWERTY layouts, but there's also Dvorak that I haven't mentioned yet. Here is QWERTS and other ones too. Azerty is here too. And once you change this, then you can click down here and change between the different keyboard layouts. But how do we approach this problem as developers? The best solution is certainly to have an options menu that allows to rebind keys. Like you can see here for CrossCode on the wonderful GameUI database website. It allows for even more accessibility than just supporting different keyboard layouts, as it also helps players with limited mobility or those able to play with only one hand. But implementing such functionality is not trivial at all and takes quite a bit of time, which is always rare in game development. I've seen quite a few commercial games without this option. And especially in game jams, it is pretty much impossible to implement in the short amount of time. A simple improvement for just about any game is to just add more bindings to your controls to support these other layouts. Just add Z to the up movement and Q to the left movement and your movement supports a 30 and also allow the arrow keys for this of course. And please think twice before using the Z key for actions. Uh, instead consider maybe using C, it's also next to X and that's also on the same spot in all three layouts, for example. Or allow for alternative keys that are the same on multiple layouts, like for example JKL is one option. Implementing this in Unity with the input system package is a breeze. Just open your input actions and add more bindings to your actions. For example, for this W, we can just duplicate this and assign the Z key. Or for this A, we can also duplicate this by Ctrl D and give it the Q key. In the legacy input system, which you can access from edit project settings and I got my project settings docked right here and then input manager, just open your axes and then you maybe for example, you have the horizontal axis and you want to duplicate this element to add more. Right now we have left and right. These are the arrow keys and A and D part of WASD. 
And now we duplicated this and we're just gonna delete everything except for the A. We're gonna change this to a Q and now we're also supporting Q. And you had, have to do the same for vertical and Z of course to support a 30. In conclusion, I definitely suggest implementing rebindable keys into your game if the budget allows it, as it gives the greatest amount of flexibility and accessibility to your players. But if this is outside your reach, make sure to support as many different input options as possible. This includes the keyboard layouts mentioned in this video, but also things like providing multiple different input options to trigger an action. For example, allowing both keyboard, mouse and gamepad to trigger the same action. I'm still struggling with the decision about implementing rebindable keys for my own game recollection, which you can see here. It currently only supports different input options, but with predefined bindings. By the way, if you're wondering, it does support a 30 movement. I just decided to not show it here to reduce clutter and hope to trigger a pleasant surprise in players using a 30 when playing. But of course, this still needs to be tested. If I still decide to implement rebindable keys for recollection or in a future game, I'll make sure to create a tutorial about it on this channel. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this quick tip and I'll see you here again soon. Bye!